Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I thank all of you and everybody at home who's listening. This is very exciting for me. If I was home today, I'd be listening on my computer as well. Uh, I think this is such a fabulous, fabulous resource for the world. And I am totally honored to be here. As I told Bernie, it's one of my favorite events to come to. Uh, not just because you're a fabulous audience, because everybody at home's a fabulous audience as well. And I'm, I, I like talking about the home. Uh, I, as an entrepreneur, as a successful businessman myself, I would attribute 50% of my success to the support I get at home. And any successful person will say that, at least at some period in their life. <laughs> what happens for a lot of people in their relationships is that they start out and they're a team working together and the one who's out there has the vision of what the company's going to be and how it can expand. Once that wheel starts turning, the world starts pulling you forward. You hold on to that vision, the opportunities come, you face them every day, you mull it over, what's the best thing, what's not the best thing. For me as a husband and a businessman, teacher, author, all the things I do, I'll think on something for three months and finally I'll decide to do it. Then I'll come home and mention to my wife, well, I think I'm going to do this thing over in Europe. And she goes, what? And suddenly it's like a reaction, and I'm like thinking, why is she not going, what a great idea. Can anybody relate to that? <laughs> you bring an idea home, and you don't get all the support you think you should get. I want to see that hand again, if anybody feels that way. Absolutely, this is what happens. And so what happens, a lot of different reactions start to occur. But first, let me make this point. It makes sense. It took me three months to process whether I felt comfortable starting that new program in Europe or whatever I was going to do. And I come and I lay it on her and just mention it to her. Oh, by the way, I decided I'm going to do this. I talked to so-and-so. And my expectation is because I've decided that it's a good idea, she's suddenly going to have this reaction like, wow, you are so brilliant. Of course, that's why they pay you the big bucks. Oh, honey, that's a great idea. She loves me. My family loves me. And the thing about people who love you is they want to protect you. And, and, you know, often, you know, here I'm this married guy for over 22 years, known my wife 27 years, and still, I'll be driving the car and she'll say, park over there. <laughs> like, doesn't she know I know how to drive? I can get there? Occasionally she might say, do you know you can get a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I'm 56 years old, I think I know I can get a ticket. And if I keep driving past, she says, you know, our insurance rates could go up. Is that really true? <laughs> Your insurance rates go up. So it, it's often our partners, they love us. They, they see our humanity. They see the fact that we've, that we've made mistakes. They see it. But most importantly, they want to protect us. And often when we make choices, we make decisions that they're not a part of, and we come and bring it back to them, and it's not even appropriate for them to be worrying for three months about whether I'm going to do something. But when I bring it home... I need to understand and allow for resistance. I hope one of the things you'll get today in my talk is to allow for resistance from the people you love. Because if you can allow for resistance, let's do a little resistance exercise here. I'll walk down here. Who wants to do this with me? Okay, so you're resisting me. And I'm not allowing for resistance, so what happens? More resistance, more resistance. Now let's all turn to somebody, just put your arm out and don't allow for resistance. I just want you to experience this, remember, to somebody. Term. Put two arms out. If you've got two partners, do two hard. A, a simple concept. But if you don't allow for resistance, you just get, oh, there she did it. Okay, let's do that again. So I'm going to push and she's going to, well, you're being, you're such a supportive wife. That was great. She just said, go right ahead, honey. <laughs> but here's the case where I'm pushing and you resist. Resist a little. You're resisting me. It's like, hey, you're making a decision, but I want to protect you. I don't know if we could do this. And I just go like that for a while. No resistance. It goes away. Put forth your ideas with your partner and allow for resistance. If you allow for their resistance, then you enlist them on your team. They need to be heard just as much as we need to be heard. They need to be included into our life just as much as we want the world to be included into our businesses. 
It's the same thing. I want everybody in the world to read my books. Mar Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, around the world. Best-selling book all around the world. Everywhere. Over 50 million Mars, Venus books. I consider that a readership of 100 million, since you have to share it with somebody. So there you go. So, but all those people, that was a big vision. I, wanted to hold, I held that vision. I have more, more people coming in, more books to sell. Let it go out. Let these good ideas go out. It's a big, big vision. So I'm married to a wife, and she has a big vision too. I love my husband. I want to see him more often. <laughs> Just as I want more people to see me, she wants to see me more often. So if I've got my vision and she's got her vision, what are we doing there? Resi oh, they got, just resist me, resist me. If I notice resistance, I just need to take it as flattery. She wants more time with me. That's great. Let me take more time with her. Let me give her what she needs. We always, as human beings, are acutely aware of what we need or what we're not getting, and that's experienced as frustration. Anyone ever experienced some frustration communicating at home? So you may not think of that frustration as being, I'm not getting what I need. We often think of it as, what's your problem? <laughs> or don't you understand? Or why can't you see my perspective? Or let's look at this differently. We resist, resist, resist. We don't realize in that moment, I'm not getting what I need. And that's what resistance comes from. And when there's a frustration comes from. When there's ongoing frustration in your relationships, whether it be your support team, a spouse, your family members, your friends, the people that are not right there with you, you'll experience frustration. And if you don't lessen that frustration, that resistance, it turns into something else. It turns into resentment. Resentment puts a death to all your creativity. Anyone ever worked in a job where you resented some people you're working with? Not as many here, that's because you're high achievers. But I promise you there's people back at home that might resent your success or the sacrifices they have to make for your success. Because resentment is inevitable if that frustration doesn't go away, that resistance isn't neutralized, it will turn into resentment. Resentment means your heart's no longer open. It's this thing that women are really experts at. <laughs> Men can do it, but women, you are the masters of resentment. Your brains are different from men's. You've got an extra memory bank. <laughs> you do. In the hippocampus of the brain, there's a memory center. When you're under stress, there's blood flow that goes to that memory center. Like I've got a little granddaughter now, and I brought a little, a little a present for her. And it's this little candle that's actually from a battery. So this is this big mystery to her. It flickers and everything. Why doesn't it burn? So she puts her finger closer and pulls it away. Puts it closer, pulls it away. Finally, she touches it. She thinks it's magic, you know, that this one doesn't burn. What is it? That's because her brain put her finger in fire or close to fire and burned, and the brain has to remember stressful experiences. The more stressful experience, the more clearly we're going to remember it. Unless it's too painful, then we block it out completely. So there's this memory. When men and women are under stress, and this is the theme of my new book, why Mars and Venus collide. Understanding why there's this collision. One of the reasons we misinterpret each other is that men and women react differently to stress. What we want to do to create and to enlist the support of the people that support us in our endeavors and to bring fulfillment into our life to create harmony rather than resistance and resentment, which eventually turns into rejection. And I make jokes about with all my some of my friends who are very wealthy speakers, I say, yeah, I have more money than you. Not because you, I made more money, it's just I was able to keep my money because I'm not divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Divorce is very expensive today, not just financially, but emotionally. It just takes so much energy. People put so much energy into divorce and the problems in the relationships as a marriage counselor for over 35 years, counseling people. The things people get counsel about are the stupidest things in the world. Now, I wouldn't say that to them, but I'm sort of generalizing here. But they'll be the littlest things. We were just uh, in Santa's factory the other day, making all my, my corporate friends and associates every year I will send presents off to. And it's a big, long list. A lot of people. My wife shops all year round. 
<laughs> we just go, but our vacations, we just shop for potential Christmas presents at the end of the year. So we have the, the wrapping factory, we've got all the corporate presents, and it's all there. We've got the list, and we're going down the list. And we were just down in Ecuador. Ecuador, you buy these beautiful shawls for like a dollar. And there was this, one of the things in there was this beautiful shawl, blue shawl, and I wanted it for my sister. I'm looking at it, and I go, that would be good for my sister. And my wife says, no, we're not doing presents for your family right now. These are corporate presents only. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, we'll put this in another room. She said, nope, nope, it's here. This is one of the corporate presents. I said, well, I think my sister will look good in this. And she said, no, we're only doing this for corporate presents right now. So I was at a moment of decision there. <laughs> I'm a smart guy. I want my wife happier. My sister can go without this shawl. And I had to say to myself, this shawl only cost a dollar. And I'm ready to risk a two-week argument over this shawl. But that's what happens in relationships. There's little compromises that the wise person makes. And I promise you, if we're not good at making little compromises, then we end up having to make big compromises. We create no-win situations. When I have couples and I counsel them in their relationships, I save them all the time. That's how Mars Venus became so big. It works so quickly. It's so effective. It's not long, long drawn-out therapy. I'm not against that. But you don't need long drawn-out therapy to learn how to fly a jumbo jet. All you need is training. And where do we get training on how to have good relationships, effective relationships? We got it from our parents. We absorb what they did. And even if you had wonderful parents, well, I have wonderful, well, I don't know. We, we have, I had wonderful parents. So, but, but their communication skills were nil. See, they lived in a different world from us, period. Their communication skills do not work today. Just like we've got this incredible technology, super learning, for helping our children learn and absorb information in a new world. Their brains are different. The media has affected their brains. The, the wiring is different. And we can understand that. We can teach them. We can stimulate the right, the right information in their brains to keep their awareness.